Good evening and welcome to the studio this evening. Nice to see everybody this evening. Uh, just an ad hoc stream. I <clears throat> didn't feel like doing anything else. I felt like doing some uh, chain mail or rather some micro mail. I've got, I'm working on this. Uh, this piece here and I felt that I might as well broadcast it as well. Plus I wanted to try out the stream deck. Uh, I just made some changes to the icons which make it easier for me to tell some of what's happening. Like I can tell which view I'm on now because I've got a red button instead of a slightly brighter one. Which helps enormously. <clears throat> so this is micro mail. This is going to be a bracelet. Actually, it's a it's a little bit a little bit larger than I intended, um, and these rings are a little bit larger than is probably good for this, but it's very flexible. So I'm going to carry on with this, um, and just see how we go. So I'm going to start by opening lots and lots of rings. I'm doing this by building on the end. I suppose the other way of doing this would be to build make a sheet and then wrap the sheet which perhaps would have been quicker especially since you can speed weave a sheet you can't speed weave this he says thinking no you can't um but what the heck i kind of like building up <laughs> or when it when it's when it sits nicely i enjoy building it up that way so it, what we're going to start with is lots and lots and lots of opening uh, rings because being micro male you go through rings really quickly well sort of I don't suppose you actually go through them any quicker than you would do if they were bigger it's just you don't get as far when you're doing it with uh, these little things That was really weird. I could have sworn there was a cat there just a minute ago. I just saw something move out the corner of my eye, but there's actually nothing there at all. But, yeah, never mind. So, these, okay, I'll come back to that in a second. These are slightly different rings. I mentioned uh, probably in a, well, I've mentioned in a few tweets. It's on the shop as well um, that I've been doing been doing some uh, stainless steel, and uh, this <coughs> this is aluminium, but not uh, anodized aluminium. This is what's called bright aluminium, which kind of feels like a misnomer <laughs> um, because it's not anodized it's not shiny I guess it's bright on the basis that it's been tumbled and polished uh, as opposed to the no more natural color of aluminium which is kind of a, a gray sort of color but having said which this is not anodized therefore it's got no protection on it from being oxidized which means it will go grey. And there's not a lot you can do to stop it. And it, it um, if it does do that, you can't easily clean it either without uh, without tumbling it in a polish as, uh, as well. Blimey, that ring is being awkward. There we go. But it's uh, it produces a diff. Am I off? Yeah, probably am. Um, it produces a different look, obviously, to uh, to to the standard anodized aluminium. So it was just a, a change. Thought I'd try a different metal. Again, I've already done some work <coughs> with titanium with the anodized aluminium of course with stainless steel 
and I've got some niobium as well which I'm going to try maybe tonight or maybe not it really depends on how far I get doing this what I feel like doing this because it's uh, as you can see these rings are well you can't see but they, these rings are tiny he says forgetting what size they are what size are they Um, 3.8 millimeters diameter. <clears throat> it's across the outside. So they are really small rings. I'm not actually, well, I was about to say I'm not actually sure if you can get smaller rings than this. Commercially, that may be. Um, obviously, you can make your own rings at whatever size you like. But I couldn't imagine doing a really large piece on anything uh, with rings smaller than this. <laughs> I like tiny, and I like you know I like small things like this. But um, I'm not sure I'd like to do sort of a, a fairly large piece in in uh, in these sorts of rings. So if you not <clears throat> if you've not seen chain mail before or even micro mail which is is just really a term that refers to making chain or using chain mail with tiny rings like this then uh, you may be wondering what I've got on my finger here this is another ring this ring is used to help me open rings uh, because it saves me having to clasp the ring with two pairs of pliers should this size is uh, interesting shall we say just takes more uh, more time to use two pliers than it does to use this so this is really just a method of speeding up this process of opening rings Generally not used for closing them. I gather some people can and do. I don't. So I'm just opening lots. I have no idea how many I need for this. Uh, the answer is is lots, probably in in the hundreds, to get anything like a chain which is uh, long enough to to act as a bracelet. Which of course is likely to take quite a long time to weave. So this is the, the tool in my right hand, this hand here, is just a normal, I will say a normal pair of pliers, a normal pair of needle nose pliers as they get described um, but they are an ergonomic pair all that basically means is they've got soft handles <laughs> and uh, the other thing that's sort of special about them um, although it is sort of standard for pliers is these have no serrations the internal of the jaws is perfect is smooth I was about to say perfectly smooth I guess they're machined but they're smooth there's no serrations like you'd find on a lot of other pliers and the reason for that is because the metals that we're using here are relatively speaking soft certainly compared to the jaws of the pliers and if they if they had serrations on them and I squeezed this material too hard I would actually transfer the, those marks onto the aluminium in this case and I don't want to do that because it spoils it so that's why I'm using the smooth jawed pliers right so uh, I probably will end up sort of opening um, some and then weaving them then perhaps opening some more 
So what we're going to do is, I don't know, do another three or four and then I'll do some weaving. Normally what I like to do is open all the rings that I need opening, but as I have no idea how many I need. I am sort of opening them as I go along. Well, I know I definitely need more than I've opened so far, that's for sure. Right, we'll just do this one and then we'll weave some into the chain. Luckily this is a weave which isn't that difficult to remember how to do. He says looking at it, trying to remember how to do it. <laughs> um, but yeah, it goes through there. So um, you need good at well, yes, I am. You need good eyesight reasonably to do this. As you can see I'm wearing glasses. These are particularly good at this for this purpose because they are they're like a reading glasses, they're close up. I might have to get hmm, let me get some of these rings out of the way because otherwise I'm gonna annoy myself with this tail. So what did I just do? I put that through there so the other thing about using rings is small is sometimes it's actually hard to see where you how far you've got or what what you're actually doing. To see where the next ring actually goes. Just because uh, it's so so tiny that it's really hard sometimes to see which ones have been thread it through and which ones haven't. And yes I have remembered to unmute the mic. Okay that's good. When they're so tiny as well they are quite awkward to pick up and uh, position. But I like, um, well I sort of like tiny. I like working with tiny until it gets frustrating and sometimes this gets frustrating which is a little bit what it felt like just then. When you are trying to get rings to go where you want them to go. Uh, for some reason the larger rings do seem more easier to work. Inherently there won't be any particular reason why they should be as such, it's just uh, um, larger rings have larger spaces and therefore um, it's easier to see what's going on. Okay, that one, that one, and the last one's through the one in front of me, yeah. Yes, it is right. And so this this weave is a these rings are a little bit too large internal diameter, or a little bit too small wire diameter for this. They're well within the acceptable range. It's just um, it uh, squashes slightly, as you can see when I, uh, or if you can see when I when I uh, just grab hold of it. The weave squashes slightly, not much, just a tiny amount, but that makes it a little bit awkward to work with. And I've got a ring here where they, I love closed it, the closure has moved slightly. And at which point I can't even find the end of the ring anymore. Which is silly because I know it's, there we go. Nope. Where's the end? Okay, so that one is not the one that I saw. I saw the end of a ring. It was slightly out of place. That's what, and it is something that normally happens with uh, with aluminium or with any of the metals when you close them. 
they have a very slight spring maybe it's that one and so <clears throat> when you or memory when you when you close them into a particular position they often relax slightly back to where they came from or the position they came from and that causes the the rings to open up very slightly so what I've got to do is then go back and uh, reposition it usually I tend to do that um, after the whole piece is completed um, that's through there so I want that one and that one okay but with rings this small I'm trying to do it as I go along as well as I see them rather than doing um, a complete check afterwards Just because I know trying to do them uh, with it with rings this small is going to be a challenge to come back and do it afterwards. Always try and move out of your way when you're trying to catch them. That, that can be a little bit frustrating. Like this one keeps nose diving. So it sort of hides under one of the others. And yep, I've got that. I've got that right. might have it right but I can't find there's the end. Blimey. and I'm wearing glasses which gets much um, so we'll start working uh, all right where's the other end there it is no that's not it that's it and got hold of the right thing I may have to start wearing a magnifying glass to be able to see these I've got a head mounted magnifying glass which is great for working on tiny things like this. And I may just end up having to dig it out. And this one. Right, it's a cup of coffee. Before I get too dry, actually, it's getting quite warm in here. I'll try and keep um, trying to get a little bit more light on the subject. It's really hard actually when to get good lighting. Just because of the distances involved with the camera being relatively close. If I move the camera further away and zoom in, then what happens is you lose resolution, which doesn't make uh, the job any easier for you to see what's going on. But the camera tends to get out in the way of the lighting as well. So have I just put Why does that look wrong? 
It isn't, but it looks it. All right, I'll just carry on. So yes, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I was just mentioning it's, it's actually quite difficult to get good, a good lighting here without using um, a lot of ridiculous lighting power and just flooding everything with light. And then the problem you've got, especially with some of these cameras, then is the fact it's too bright and you're getting a lot of glare on the cameras. It's a no-win scenario when you're working close, uh, close up like this. So hopefully it doesn't look too dark. Now we'll try and stay in frame. See the life of a streamer. The, the, these um, these people who have I done? I'm doing something. Something's not right. What am I doing, silly here? That that. Okay, through there. Um, yeah, these these streamers who just stream games have it easy. <laughs> yes, they may have gre uh, green screens, and they've got to light the green screen properly. And uh, no, I don't have a green screen. If I did, I'd have to light that properly on top of lighting up what I'm actually doing. And you're just capturing a game off your computer. That's a lot easier. A lot less cameras as well. <laughs> I got that right. Yep, I have. Okay. Right. Yeah, that tail's getting in the way, but I kind of want to leave it there for the moment. If only because it tells me which end is which when I've picked the pick the piece up. Oh dear. A little frustrating at times. I was doing I thought I'd do this because I, I generally find it relaxing. <laughs> that ring has shifted again. Have I got this in the right? No, I haven't. Something's wrong there. Uh, yep, I skipped a wing. I wonder what would have happened if I'd have carried on with that technique. Maybe I'll try that one of these days. Right, that ring there has moved. Yeah, the instant you take a look at it, yeah, oh, there we go, that's why. Come on. So sometimes not only is it frustrating when you're trying to actually get the rings to go where you want them to go, sometimes it's frustrating when Oh, I see. When you're trying to find the position of a ring, it's that one. Tiny tweak there. Of course, being smaller, the the. The tiniest of uh, movements is sort of magnified with it being so small. Clean my glasses, make it easier to see. Make it easier for me to see anyway. Yes, still on camera. Okay, right. Yep, 
Yeah, next time I try this, I'm going to try it uh, in larger sizes of rings. I find doing it this way to be um, reasonably okay. Um, trying to do it this way with this size rings, I think next time what I'm going to do is try and that ring is out of position again. Next time I do this, I'm going to try uh, doing it as a sheet first, that means flat, and then wrapping the sheet up uh, to get it to, uh, to close up into a circle like this. I highly suspect that's going to be easier to actually weave in this small size, certainly on the larger sizes of rings. This is relatively easy. And of course, if the, uh, if the weave was very slightly tighter, it would also help. Kind of want to do it like, I wish, wish I had a needle that I could just sort of uh, thread through a magic needle that is because uh, a needle setting a needle through wouldn't actually help much you know, just it would just make it more awkward to get the uh, the ring through it it's this ring on this side it sits underneath for some reason it always wants to go underneath the one opposite it and that makes it awkward to get the ring through if it went the other way where it went over the top of the one on the other side that wouldn't be a problem at all and now that I've got that ring through there it's won't spin around for me to close it So now I have no idea which ring it is that I haven't closed. <laughs> it's not that one. So what I've got to do now is take it out. Or at least... Um, did I drop that ring? It's not there. These are so tiny that, and that one, is that the one I just put in? That might be the one I just put in. They're so tiny. It is. Yeah, that one's through, that one's through. And that one is also fastened up. Okay, it must have dropped out. And I didn't notice it. So it went somewhere, and I have absolutely no idea where. What is it about you rings that always want to go? Yeah, I've done it again. The one at this, uh, the clo one closest to me has gone underneath the one opposite, which is the most awkward wet position for me to be able to uh, put the ring through. Ah oh, well. So it's getting longer, really slowly, but it's getting there. I love, I do love the look of, of this, of micro mail for this sort of stuff, but yeah. 
that one's not closed properly um, but it is really awkward to work with and time consuming to work with that one has bent back slightly there we go just needed a bit of tweaking I say I really like um, I, I personally really like the look of uh, of this this these tiny tiny rings when they're like this because you've got such a a complex pattern in such a tiny small space but uh, I don't know I don't know whether it's worth uh, worth all the effort to be honest I'm going to finish this one but it is sort of several hours worth of work and uh, I don't know whether it looks like it's actually worth that amount of time a uh, coyote dancer I haven't heard uh, I haven't seen you for a long time I suppose yeah <laughs> uh, okay thank you very much this is um, it, this is a variation on a box weave it, it's actually called Turkish round because it's six sided or three sided depending on how you count them um, rather than for two or four sided um, so rather than being a square it's sort of hexagonal and uh, it, it's in little tiny rings these are just over three and a quarter millimeters in diameter as you can see compared well see compared to my fingers my fingers are quite uh, sort of quite large I guess but um, they're really tiny and uh, that's that's about an hour and a half's work <laughs> It's been a long while, yes, indeed. Man, it's, it, it's been a long while for me doing much broadcasting. I mean, I think it was it uh, about April I started again, and then uh, uh, I sort of only been doing about one stream a week at the weekends. Um, I, I had a, a year off because of uh, various uh, various things, but. Uh, I'm gradually coming back now and uh, uh, normally during the week at the moment I'm busy doing some decorating and, uh, and sorting things out having moved uh, moved house and studio and uh, I've not generally been streaming during the week but uh, this week I've just kind of uh, well this morning when I got up I just I've had enough decorating for a while so I decided I would uh, have an evening off of decorating and actually do something else. And this uh, this has been sat here for a little while for me to play with. So this is um, I've been I've been playing with some new metals. So this is a uh, this is aluminium, but it's it's called bright aluminium. Which mm, um, um, it almost feels like a, it's been misnamed because uh, it's bright because it's been tumble polished, but it doesn't. It's not anodized or anything, so it's not as shiny as uh, the the aluminium, such as the base that you you have. And uh, it, it this will sort of dull down over time because with it not being protected, it will oxidize so it'll go it'll go a duller gray but it, I thought it was uh, yeah, fun to try something else and uh, I've just completed an uh, sorry a stainless steel bracelet as well which I'll show you in a moment oh dear yes so you've got to have patience when you're doing this and there are times when I've got patience and then there are times when I don't And I'm kind of halfway in between at the moment. <laughs> this is, the 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 thing about this particular um, one is, it's so flexible, which is an advantage um, to the bracelet itself. But it's a disadvantage when you're trying to weave it. You could almost do with one that you could sort of just weave um, and then just click your fingers, and it got you know it gets all loose again. 
It is right, isn't it? I'm just looking at this and just checking. Yeah, so it's yeah, really, really flexible, but uh, when you're trying to weave it, it's awkward. Uh, Clouds Guy, good evening, welcome. Hello, and uh, long time, yes, indeed. So this was a, this is a, a stainless steel one I I finished just recently. Uh, this is a candy cane and uh, just another different metal it's heavy though especially compared to the aluminium uh, and i'm going to have a play with these as well i've got some some rings here these are niobium so i've got a couple of colors this is a bluey purple color and a, a greeny blue color so I'm going to do something with that. Actually, they're a bit closer in colour than I was expecting, but uh, that's another different metal, niobium. Really good if you've got any sort of allergies to, to metals, because it's really a, uh, quite a, a stable, non uh, hypoallergenic material is uh, niobium. Um, you need to check out wood burn. You need to learn wood burning again. Why do you need to learn wood burning again? You're absolutely fantastic at wood burning <laughs> they're nice aren't they they're, they're quite shiny as well it's uh, unlike um, they're, they're quite a strong one metal unlike uh, titanium which is a, a dusty sort of color they're not dusty but they look sort of dusky and matte, uh, dusty and matte these are quite shiny um, which is uh, which is what was attracting me because I, I like the titanium sort of colours, but um, these are a little, you know, they're a lot sort of different. I mean, that's the, that's the titanium. Um, that, that, those two are the same. Effectively, they're supposed to be the same colour, shall I? That's titanium, this is niobium, and you can see it's, um, it's a lot more shiny. Um, so I figured I'd have a play. Oh, just practice. Oh, okay, yeah, I kind of need to practice as well. Where's my latest piece? What was I doing recently? Where's my latest piece? Huh. What have I done with it? Uh, what? I can't even remember what I was doing. Oh yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing another cat. <laughs> It'd have to be another cat, didn't it? Because yes, it's our female cat that I was doing. I'm just like, where did I do it with it? Did I put it? Hello, Junior. I didn't know you were in here. Oh, there we are. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> It's 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 not it's not the female cat. This is uh, this is the kitten. Oops, yeah, l l shadows, shadows and focus. Uh, hopefully that doesn't look. I can't see with these glasses on. Hopefully that doesn't look too bad. Let me switch glasses. See if I can see it on my own screen. one I was working on anyway um, I'm taking a rest from that and um, I'm trying a different uh, diff slightly different technique with this all the cats that well you've seen the cats I've done in the past where I've been actually creating surface texture on the uh, of the fur on the wood as I've been doing it I'm trying my best not to do that on this one I'm just trying to use color as opposed to texturing as well and it's interesting different way of doing it this is the kitten, it's a ginger kitten, so it's even the right colour. But uh... <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah. It's um 
I, it's just it's just uh, I, I, I found that I kind of have to be a bit careful with setting up the camera out of the way I mean it's, it's creating a shadow at the moment and I have just moved some some lights around here to make making the jewelry a bit easier to see because when you when you're working close up at this sort of level and then the any sorts of shadow or anything gets in the way and if I as I've just readjusted everything now <laughs> all of this is probably going to be out of uh, focus but uh, yeah um, yeah and of course when yeah the other the other thing is as you know when you're trying to video as you say when you're trying to video or even photograph pyrography it's shiny <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't help because it just throws glare back uh mew yes well he is he actually is quite a talkative it's not around the mew you probably heard if you heard one was uh, was junior and um he's actually asleep i tell you what let's see if he'll let me do it i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna pick him up you're going to, you're going to come and see everybody junior there we go. And let's go there. So this fella here, this is this is Junior. It was it was being asleep on the. Uh, yeah. He he was a feral cat who moved in. Hello, you need to see every look everybody up there on the camera. No, I'll put him down. Um, otherwise I'm likely to get raked for a start. Good boy. Well done. Thank you very much for letting everybody have a look at you. He, he, he has, let's go back to the main cam. Um, he has, uh, he has had his portrait done in, in pyrography. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, he, he, as I say, he was a feral cat. He's moved in. Um, even about a year ago, I would have been hard pressed to do what I just did, which was pick him up off the floor when he was asleep, because uh, he's he was laid out flat on his sides, and if you used to have to snatch him up almost, otherwise you get teeth or claws in you. Um, he actually just let me pick him up without any problem, and uh, he has actually got dirty paws. <laughs> I've now got a dirty shirt. Um, you need to clean your paws. And uh, yeah, he's got a lot more sort of, he's obviously getting a bit older and he's got a lot more sort of uh, tolerant. But let's have a look. <laughs> if Junior pop, if, if sorry, if, Phil, if Theo pops in, who is the ginger cat, I'll. Um, I pop him up on, on stream because he, he he was the kitten and yeah, that's says what he be about. Hmm, he sort of must be coming up for about a year old now, um, and he's been used to being picked up and all sorts. So um, Theo's a you know you, you can sort of th I won't say throw him around because that's not true but you can turn him upside down and lay him in your arms and throw him over your shoulder and things like that and he's he's a very cute cat so clouds guy um you you you're a little bit quiet tonight how are you doing I haven't well I'm gonna say I haven't seen you for a while partly that's my fault of course and yeah Am I on cam? Yes, I am on camera. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm just concentrating a little bit. Because otherwise that happens. I end up, these rings being so small, they just end up being fired all over the place if you're not careful. I suppose the other problem with doing micro mail, which is what this tends to get called, he says it's too, it, it's almost too small for you to actually see what I'm doing. Never mind for me to see what I'm doing. 
Oh yeah, no, I, I and and to be honest, I, I mean, I, I know a lot of people like to lurk. Uh, uh, Cloud guy, uh, I do myself on a lot of streams. I don't actually very often enjoy chatting too much um, when I'm watching other streams. Partly uh, because if I'm if I'm chatting, I'm not concentrating on the stream. And it kind of seems counterproductive to watch a stream and then not actually watch it. But, uh, yeah, no, it's all right. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, as long as being introvert doesn't get out of hand, I guess. You might, it might surprise you, but I'm a bit that way as well introverted I don't uh, I'm not a particularly outgoing person I've just um, learned uh, uh, over the years that uh, not to bother about it to be honest <laughs> um, Am I doing this correctly? No, am I doing this correctly? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. Nope, I've got that one wrong. Uh, yeah, just not to bother about it. And, uh, you know, w at one time I would have hated going into a room of people um, completely or even standing up in front of a lot of people these days. You know what? I, I don't bother. I mean, obviously now here I am broadcasting. I know it's not quite the same because there's nobody else in the room. And all I'm doing is talking to a camera, but uh, it's uh, I, uh, I'm just uh, I do exactly the same thing these days. If I go into a room of people, I'll go into a room of people these days and go, "Hello, everybody!" Just kind of as I do on stream, partly because having been in sales for a few years, <laughs> you've kind of got to be a little bit like that, and. Um, I've also done lecturing as well, where you can't really be too introvert with, uh, with students because of course they're there to learn, they, you need to talk to them. <laughs> um, but uh, ah, Sometimes I can't talk and do it at the same time. Yeah, typ yeah typically a lurker. <laughs> yeah, small groups. Mm. I I'm kind of uh, it's easier to hide in big groups <laughs> than it is to hide in small groups you can't hide in small groups because everybody can see you um, and but I know what you mean <laughs> There is, there is one nice th thing, I mean this this can be a really frustrating thing to do. Not only, I mean it's, you, actually you probably could see me there, it's, it's awkward to pick up the rings and because they're so tiny to see and I am wearing close-up glasses here, um, it can be frustrating to get them in the right place especially as you just see me trying to get rings to lie just where I wanted them to lie. The one, the one nice thing about streaming is it, it sort of takes your mind off the fact that this is really awkward sometimes. Am I doing that right? Hopefully. And although I sometimes go quiet when things like that happen and the ring won't come off. There we go. Thank you. Um, it sort of helps to get these things done. Uh, just because... 
whilst I'm talking and concentrating on what I'm saying and reading chat, I'm not actually noticing what I'm doing quite so much. And I actually often get through more work by not noticing. Well, no, I don't get through more work. I actually get through less work because I'm talking. But I don't notice how long I've spent doing it. Um, which means I don't get bored with what I'm doing. <laughs> Although I find this fascinating enough not to be bored doing it, but I'm sure you know what I mean. I wish I could get this to actually... I suppose you could if you put a clasp on it, with, with a lobster claw clasp on the end. I I, I, I like this weave, uh, it, it's, although it's slightly loose, if a slightly loose version of this weave like this. It's very nice because you can put a twist in it and if you can keep the twist in it, it, it sort of makes it, gives it a little bit more of a different look to when it's uh, when it sits straight. Uh, and of course, I guess if you, with a lobster claw clasp, you can do that because of course you can put the twist in and then, then put the clasp in and that will hold the twist um, th uh, throughout. I mean, obviously it won't hold it as tight as I'm doing it and it will move around, but it does give you that slightly different visual effect. Um, yeah, I usually, well, um, I claim the mobile one, well laid. Yeah, I, I usually go full screen um, on, on the window, so I can't see the chat anyway. Well, thank you. That's very nice of you, Coyote Dancer, to uh, to do that. Um, apparently, uh, in in the past two minutes, though, um, I think it's five people are actually watching. So, welcome to the other three, four. I can't add three. Yeah, three. Because uh, I, I know there's, there's two of them here in chat: Coyote Dancer and uh, Clouds Guy. So, uh, a, a special welcome to those two, of course. But to anybody else who's watching. You are quite welcome to lurk. You're also quite welcome to uh, to join in and say hello. And uh, potentially, if you want, you can ask questions about what I'm doing or any of the other crafts. There's the uh, Coyote Dancer and uh, Clouds Guy now. I do, or have done, and I'm doing uh, f uh, five other crafts now. It's gone up by one. Um, since you two uh, probably last saw me. So I, I do do a number of different crafts on stream uh, from wood carving, uh, pyrography, which we were talking about earlier, uh, which is you know, painting pictures with heat, and um, jewelry making, which is sort of generally sort of this uh, chain mail. But I do beadwork as well and, and some weaving and one or two other things. Scraper board, which is board that you scrape, hence the name, but it's um, it, it's black and when you scrape the surface you get a white underlay. Shows through and you can create pictures like that. Um, something which is called punch craft, which is a bit like miniature rug making, so miniature picture rugs and he says I always forget some okay it's um, either twitch then he's oh well it could be um, I was gonna say twitch could be reporting the wrong numbers or it's within the last couple of minutes yeah I think it only checks every so often but the other thing you get is you also get people um, who don't join, don't join chat but are watching um, and that for example I think is if somebody hasn't signed into Twitch then they don't appear in chat and they don't appear in the in the viewer list in, in chat um, but they are actually watching the video and I think so it counts them so if uh, if you are watching and that's uh, what it says then you know and, and you aren't logged in then feel free obviously to log in create an account it is free if you uh, don't have one and you can follow then come back
<laughs> uh, I don't know, chat, uh, from, a, from a broadcaster's point of view, chat is 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 great. Um, for uh, I guess for two reasons. <laughs> um, one is when it when it is quiet like this. Of course, it provides some interactivity, which is nice from a broadcaster's point of view because. It gives subject in for, for creative broadcasters, especially I guess the game players can do a lot more talking about the game. But it, it sort of provides uh, you know a conversation which is a lot more interesting to listen to than a monologue from me. And um, of course, the other thing uh, is that uh, you guys could, in principle, chat to each other. So I don't have to be as talkative. So you do have my work for me. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Is that a slash? Was that a slash me that you did? You, you did that with uh, Coyote Dancer, or uh, is is that some sort of other way of doing? I, you know what? It's it, I I have to get back into sort of what Twitch can and can't do and things and in terms of things like that especially these days because um, you might have um, you might have noticed that uh, I, I, I ah, you might have noticed I've got my tongue in a twist and my teeth are not working properly I was about to say I've got uh, a subscribe button I'm not a partner though it's just an associate but um, it's a change that's something new and so I've, I've got to start and do some more work with uh, with the Twitch stuff and things like the emotes now. I've got to start working on some emotes because I've got three ish. Well, it's sort of one, three times. Because <laughs> um, subscribers get to uh, get, an, get an emote. And I really ought to, but the trouble is now, it, with being a variety sort of streamer, trying to think of a suitable emote is quite difficult. <laughs> Um, and I've lost my train of thought as to where I was going with this particular ring. There we go. I'll put it through there anyway. Yeah, it, um, it, it, it is. I, uh, I can't. I can't. I don't recall how I actually originally came to Twitch itself. But I, I came watching Twitch through the forget uh, gaming. I think actually it was probably Dan's gaming I was watching originally. Um, although I really can't remember uh, what what brought me in to watch the game. I probably was doing had done something like a Google search on a game for something. Um, trying to read a review or something and, and it would have popped up with somebody on Twitch playing uh, the game and so I'd have discovered Twitch that way but then um, what what started the creative and actually started well potentially started the broadcasting was that I I also then discovered Minecraft uh, broadcasting you know, people broadcasting Minecraft and I will have been. I was watching them, and um, there's a artillery 62, I think it is. Is a an artist, and uh, at one point he was broadcasting in. I have mean, watched him quite a few times broadcasting in the Minecraft uh, uh, game category. Okay, I've got to be careful where I stand because Junior is asleep right by my feet, and I didn't move. Um, uh, and uh, I, I used to watch him uh, do electronic ah drawing Minecraft stuff, obviously being in the category, and he was so I, I, and I followed him. And then one day um, I saw he was live, uh, and I just happened to notice, um, you know, because on the follower thing that you had, I just happened to notice it said creative underneath. Like, what on earth is this creative? Um, so I clicked on it um, and discovered the creative section. And at that point, I don't think I watched a game broadcast then for about another two months. 
Um, I was just so fascinated with the the creative, um, and uh, but the um, what games were I watching? Probably, I, I don't tend to watch a lot, but it would have been. Well, I don't know because Dan's broadcast quite a few things, so it might have been uh, probably started maybe with something like one of the Dooms or something like that. I suspect I don't really know, but I tend to I don't tend to watch very many. So a few Minecraft streamers, um, Factorio, um, Fortress Craft Evolved, uh, Train Simulator maybe a little flight simulator it tends to be the people i watch more than the games these days but you know it's it's the personality of the i i sort of will start watching somebody for the game and then i'll carry on watching them for the personality of the person more you know it's how they make the game into they can make an interesting game look boring or a boring game look interesting if you see what i mean I get the right way around but um because there are some streamers that may be really good uh, gameplays that I just can't watch. And um, it's kind of the same with um, creative, to be honest. And I, I, I can't just watch anybody being creative. Um, I tend to start watching people that stay home all the time, so I have to stop it myself. I like watching the streamers that explain what they're doing and why they're doing it, as opposed to people who are just silent. Uh, or they say, this is how you do it. And it's kind of like, well, why? And, and I get bored with those really quickly. About the only, well, not no, not even that. I was gonna say the only exception is probably glass work. Somebody who's doing some flame work, glass blowing. That's something that's fascinated me for years and years and years, and I will tolerate that a little bit more, um, but not uh, not significantly. But 3D modeling, yeah, I, uh, am I doing that right? I keep looking at this, wondering if I'm doing it right, and I hopefully I am, yes. Yeah, I, um, I do so occasionally watch 3D modeling. Uh, you know, uh, ZBrush, etc. But uh, the 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 thing about that is, I can't afford ZBrush or Mudbox or any of the other ones. I know there's Blender, isn't there, which is a 3D one, which I ought to perhaps have a go at because I like the idea of 3D modeling uh, from the sculpture point of view. So, I mean, I I do and. I do use a 3D modeling tool, but that's a hard modeling tool. It's, it's a geometry based tool. Um, rather than a, an organic uh, modeling tool like, uh, like uh, Mudbox or something like that. I play about with, sculpt, with Sculptress a bit. And I'm building a 3D print at the moment. So it's an old kit, but uh, I, the intent is maybe to try and do some 3D modeling and then print it out. Um, not, not fantastically watch that one a great deal. I have seen it, but it's it's not one that I, I would go back to a lot. But there again, of course, if everybody watched the same games or, or only watched the same games, it would there wouldn't be very many games in the world. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think what to, to area is. I have watched it a couple of times. The name is familiar, but uh, <laughs> uh, well, that's kind of <laughs> Cloud's got you know <laughs> uh, that 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 come overly on the end yeah, until I get the money. Yeah, that's. That's kind of it, isn't it? It's uh, I mean, ZBrush is what about six, seven hundred pound, I think, uh, UK pounds. I don't know what that is in dollars or any other currency. Um, it's it's expensive. It looks good, but it's expensive. I, I mean, I already pay out for Photoshop. 
which I actually don't use as much as I should. Uh, I actually prefer Painter uh, for electronic art, but uh, yeah, that's why I use Sculptress, which is uh, which is free. Um, but I, 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 I practice and things. For a hundred, can, can you? I might have to have a look at that, but it's... Uh, um, I ought to have a look at Blender as well, because... Um, you know, using... I want, I want, yeah, it's... Um, I'm told Blender is, is quite good. Never actually used it though, or installed it, so... But I want to... Yeah, I want I want to be able to model using well using a pen, so using it like a tool, so you know to mimic to some extent trying to doing it on real uh, real life objects rather than uh, screen based objects. But yeah, I mean, of course, the problem is when you're watching people on screen. Somebody who actually knows what they're doing with it, whatever it is, they make it look so easy that you sort of, you know, you, you think, oh, I can do that. <laughs> and of course, it's not quite the same thing when you try and have a go yourself. <laughs> and underneath that pair there. <laughs> it's like um, I've, uh, of course this as you know coyote with the uh, with the uh, pyrography I've uh, in streams I've had quite a lot of people saying you know, aren't you, you know, you're taking your time doing that aren't you uh, and of course um, they're um, They've been watching things like on YouTube where everything is time lapsed and, and not real time. And of course, they, they kind of, a lot of people seem to think that pyrography can be, you know, an A4 picture can be done in about 20 minutes instead of sort of 10 hours. And it, it's, it's sort of a, Similar sort of thing, and and, and uh, I mean even even you know from my own experience doing things like uh, you know using things like Sculptress, and I, I know it's not as easy as people make it look, and it's a completely different skill set uh, using 3D modeling than to 2D modeling uh, or even 2D drawing. Um, it. it doesn't translate very well and that's sort of you know, my experience of it shall we say and and yet i still expect to be better than i am okay i wasn't aware of that I, uh, last time i looked at it there was kind of only one version which was the you know the the, the big one i think i think you can also license it as well on a monthly basis but that also seemed a ridiculous price $150 wouldn't be too bad. Um, obviously, depending on what you actually get for the uh, for that version, but uh, oh, <laughs> I have just realised I've got three rings on the desk in front of me. Um, that's the last three rings I've got open, but it, I'm just laughing because of the pure coincidence there's exactly three rings. And I mean, I suppose there was a 33% chance of there being three rings left, and given that I'm using them in threes. But uh, it just seemed a, a nice coincidence that I've got an exact number. When things like that happen, that people start thinking sort of, uh, you know, people are psychic or 
there's some mysterious force at work in the universe to make sure I've just had three rings. Um, I've just put that through there and I've completely forgotten where I'm up to. Yeah. Have I just put two rings through? Yeah, I did, didn't I? Oh, okay. Right, so I'll pull that through there and then I'll correct the mistake I've just made. Which is that ring, which shouldn't be there. I've only got two places I can put the ring, so to speak. Um, and I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> What I'm going to do now is open it and move it. What I just did is actually put two rings through the same path, which I shouldn't have done. Thirty-three point. Yeah, that's right. Thirty-three and a third. Well, I was just approximating. I know I've got an A-level maths, but uh, on that ring I didn't know them, so not so uh, coincidental perhaps so let's pull that through there now i've got to spend some time opening some more rings oh dear you've only got one place to go ring and you have to go the wrong place there we go go there that's it thank you Right, so it's about double the length <laughs> since I started. Ah uh, dear. Okay, <laughs> that does seem like uh, uh, a disadvantage. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So that's that. That's that's probably grown about an inch in an hour and a bit an hour and three quarters or an hour and a, an hour and a yeah about an hour and a quarter about quarter past seven when i started uh so it's going to take a while uh you haven't done any style of artwork yeah um i kind of was uh, that's careful where i stand he's right by my feet um I think he tends to think of me as his cat and I did get that the right way around because uh, he does tend to favour me over uh, Lady Zara. Uh, yet yeah, that's I started again April Aprilish time because I, I wanted to do some art and I just didn't have the motivation to actually do it you know you, you got that feeling of I really want to do it but I just can't be bothered and uh, I've got yeah I've got some I got materials here like the board and and everything else and I have the space and you you probably can't see it but this is a two meter wide two meter wide desk uh, it's a at least a meter deep uh, and it's a standing desk and it actually has got electric motor so it'll go up and down so I can actually move it to whatever position I'm comfortable with. Like I'm standing up now, I actually prefer broadcasting this way. It's, it's a lot more comfortable. I don't actually lean over the desk quite so much, so it's better on my back and things. It's a lot more comfortable position. But I've also got another space down there, just to the left, which I can do stuff on. Um, as well as the computer, which is doing the broadcasting, which is sat right over there. It's about six feet away from me at the moment. And I've got the whole room as well. And it's just so much space and it's kind of I want to do things I want to airbrush I want to carve I, 
want to do everything at the same time. I want to do some of the models, build some of the models that I've got, like the printer and things like that. And uh, I just couldn't get up the motivation to do it, which is why I started streaming again, because streaming, as, as I used to do, used to make make me do something, make me do art and, and crafts and things like that, and actually have a reason to actually go ahead and do it. And I'm picking this up when I don't need to pick it up, because what I actually want to do is open some more rings. And that's kind of why, uh, why I started streaming again, because you guys watching are what make me do what I like doing, which is crafts and things like that. And uh, so I'm going to use this particular tool, which is a ring opening ring. Uh, turn it around. No. Ah, well, it doesn't matter as long as I do that. Use it either way around. It's not particularly important, just whatever's comfortable. Uh, I can't get my hand in this. this. My hand seems to be in completely the wrong position for some reason. I have a lot of these to open. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, oh yeah, just that was it. Yeah, and that was the reason I've, I, or one of the reasons why I started uh, broadcasting again. Plus the fact they actually like doing it. It's amazing. Uh, how, I won't, I won't say it's, it's addictive. It's it's not, but it is. It is amazing how you kind of miss, or I kind of miss, not streaming when I'm not streaming. <laughs> it is. Uh, it is something I find quite fun to do and interesting to do and to describe and talk about. And of course, as I, as you're aware, uh, Curti Dancer, one of the reasons I started streaming in the or started streaming in the first place, apart from being, I won't say dead into doing it, um, but uh, one of the streamers I was watching made me promise to start, so I did. Um, but is uh, I suppose it's, it it do it drives more the style in which I broadcast, which is to sort of explain stuff as I go along. So while I'm doing some of the things like carving, I mean opening rings like this there's not a lot to explain. But um, whilst I'm doing carving or any of the other crafts, explaining what I'm doing and why I'm doing it that way, which may or may not be the right way, but it's the way I'm doing it at the time. Um, is one of the reasons I stream just so that people can, as as you were saying, uh, Clouds Guy, you can come along to a stream and you can something that you might be interested in doing and uh, ask questions and learn a, a bit about how to start and uh, potentially avoid some of the issues or the problems that you would have without uh, with trying to guess. Apart from the fact that I'm, I'm fascinated watching the glass workers anyway, just um, one of the reasons I do uh, do like watching them is because I think, well, I'm hoping later this year to try and do it myself. I'm going to do a, a short one day course, at, at the very least, just to see, just to prove whether I do like it or not. Um, but if I do, then hopefully later this year, what I intend to do is actually get some glass working kit and uh, start to do some, uh, which I intend to do on stream as well. So you wanted to be able to broadcast once upon a time. There's nothing stopping you starting, uh, Coyote Dancer. You know, nothing at all. It's, uh, well, <laughs> there may be something stopping you, and that will be a computer that can handle a broadcast and a camera to do it with, but you know what I mean. Don't have to give up on dreams. You can try it, uh, and if you don't like it, you can stop. It would be nice to see uh, 
Nice to see you uh, doing some of the work as well. Some of that sounds like. <laughs> Uh, I, it would be nice to see you doing some of your um, pyrography and things like that. I didn't quite mean it <laughs> along the lines of you not doing what you're supposed to be doing. But uh, thank you for uh, for the compliment. Oh, and a decent internet connection. Yeah. That does uh, that does help, I, uh, true. But for me, shall we say for many people who are able to watch a decent stream, they um, are likely to have a reasonably decent internet connection if they're watching it on a computer rather than say a tab a piece uh, a, a a phone. That's the word I was looking for. And uh, well, that. That might make a difference. And I only say might because that, I guess, depends on you on your satellite charges. <laughs> I do know because the place, uh, the place where I um, worked uh, when I was doing sales, one of the things we did sell is satellite access um, to anything actually which we used to sell uh, what they call visa very small aperture aperture very small aperture aperture i can't say the word aperture 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 that doesn't sound right very small aperture terminals vsats um and you could get 10 megs out of those at least uh, at the very least 10 to 100 megs uh, Uh, storms in the middle of the forest. Uh, okay, yes, you've said the two bad words for satellite. Storms and forest. In other words, lots of water. You love the forest. Yes. The thing I don't like about the forest are the midges. So the, the biting insects, shall we say. Um, in the UK that would, would be mainly sort of midges and mosquitoes more than, any, more than anything else but yeah I, I like forests and they get a bit spooky on the night though I when I was a lot younger than I am now I used to cycle to work I used to cycle about 12 miles to and from work and on the way home I used to cycle past a forest um, and uh, the, the road went right past the the edge of the forest the road was completely unlit so it was the forest and uh, it was a quite a quiet road you didn't get very many cars on it and uh, in summer that was alright it was lovely it was a nice uh, a nice ride but in winter it's been really spooky coming past the forest. I really didn't like that bit of it. Yeah, but you're right. Yes, well, I mean that's the main thing. That is the main thing. It's it will it would obviously is be absolutely fantastic uh, inspiration for art with that. Okay. Never, um, never. Uh, Duffy sounds never particularly played played about a lot with video encoders. I'm assuming then that um, two six five is uh, easy enough for uh, recipients to also decode. Um, I'm guessing it'd probably be faster for them to decode as well. I suspect. I mean, you can play about with all sorts of parameters as well, uh, Cloud Guy, like um, how often you send an iframe and things like that, so which can, which can drastically change your bandwidth. I won't say, um, 
I mean, where I am now, we've uh, we've got a sort of a partial forest. <laughs> um, it's more of a uh, it's more of a sparse woodland, shall we say, uh, which is at the I was about to say is at the end of our garden. It it is the end of our garden, and uh, um, I haven't had time yet this year. But one of the things I I want to do is because it is basically go to the end of the garden, which is in the this sort of wood, wooded area, and uh, uh, take well the tablet that's in front of me. I've got a tablet computer, and uh, just sit there and at the because uh, it's also on the top of a hill, so I've got a fantastic view from just there. Um, so sort of foresty area one way, and uh, a, a valley spread out in front of me in the other area. And it's an absolutely fantastic, uh, fantastic sort of view either way. It'd be great to actually use that and draw. But uh, just a bit busy at the moment this year to actually go and do that. Of course, Coyote Dancer, there is another way. You, know, you you might not be able to broadcast. You can always record, though. You know, record um, record and upload to YouTube. But yeah, it'll take a longer time with a slower connection. But um... <laughs> see, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get your get get your work on uh, uh, live work out there, so I can watch you while you're doing it. Um, that one's already done. I think what I'll do is I'll weave these rings then, and then because uh, once these are, once I've woven these, I will probably stop for this evening. Just because it's it's actually quite hard work doing these. Just the concentration that you need to be able to weave in in that that tiny space there. I hope that's in focus actually, I can't see it with these glasses. <laughs> I remember looking at your website, Carty Dancer, and uh, some of the images there are absolutely amazing. Although, having said that, I will just caveat that and say, I haven't actually looked for a year, so... Um, you may have changed it since then, and or even taken it down. So, but when when I looked a year ago or more ago, when when we first obviously started conversing, um, there were some absolutely amazing images. Was that a comment against YouTube or? <laughs> I mean, in theory these days, you can actually upload stuff to Twitch. Um, I don't know if it, how long it stays. Um, hmm. Well, I, I hope whether or not you choose to restart um, or not, I hope uh, the, the, the reasons that made you stop have gone away and are not going to come back. I'm going to start and do shortly because having having now uh, been broadcasting what for, well broadcasting for a year taking a year off and starting again I'm eventually getting around to the fact that I, I, I am sort of sketching out a logo <laughs> it's only taking two and a half years 
but that's uh, that's big <laughs> partly because the, there's this on the Etsy shop there's this little space that's a grey square on, on the management console where the logo should go and I could do with filling that in but also um, on uh, on YouTube because one of the things I want to do is actually get uh, just about everything I've done on Twitch apart from a few in April um, just about everything I've done on Twitch I've recorded locally on my own PC and apart from the fact I need to get it off because it's taking up a big disk um, I wanted to put them on to YouTube because they've been deleted from Twitch so I, I, I've been doing some work on YouTube uh, to sort of tidy up the, the channel that's that's there that I haven't been using and uh, and actually upload uh, all of these videos so almost the complete broadcast history will go on there at some point in the future um, but that's probably there's about 100 gigs no, there's over a terabyte 100 gigs that's a thousand gigs isn't it there's over a terabyte of data to upload at some point um, so I was, I was, I've been tidying up and one of those tidy ups is actually to sort of put the banner image in on things like that and uh, so I've actually started work on a logo for once and I will get the videos uh, videos up there as soon as time allows but one of the things uh, I was about to say is uh, yeah, they, the very first ones I started again in um, April I didn't actually record because I, I moved to OBS Studio and didn't realize that I had to set up the automatic record. Uh, and it was something like about a month later when I realized it actually wasn't recording. So some of those are actually lost. Okay, well, as hopefully so they don't then in that case I hope the medical things don't stop you doing what you want to do and you manage whatever it is uh, suitably to allow you to enjoy yourself uh, do I know the resolution of the YouTube spanner uh, yes um, but not off the top of my head if you because there's actually three um, there is the sort of one well, I say three but what they do is they scale it or, or letterbox it to um, things so there's one for mob there's one for phones there's one for tablets and there's one for PCs uh, and what they what they do is um, I think they scale it up for the piece or the whichever one you give them this the the they take the, the image as it would be on a PC and then they chop, they crop it for the smaller ones. So, um, uh, Lolali, hi, good afternoon. You were broadcasting this afternoon and I didn't get a chance to watch you. It worked took over. Um, if you go in to your YouTube, the console, uh, and go in as though you're going to edit the banner, to, to upload a banner there is a um, thing which allows in that area uh, there is a, a download link for a template well it's not exactly a template what it is is it, it's a web page which gives you the sizes in pixels for the three sizes so there's sort of the uh, phone safe area in the middle which is it's only about sort of a couple of hundred pixels high I think at that point and let's say 400 wide I'm not sure but then the the full PC one is something like about 228 2228 or something pixels wide something like that but it, do, it, it does tell you there is a there is a, a download uh, link um, that's the finest JML you've ever seen <laughs> yeah um, this is the three point what is it? Uh, seven, three, three point three millimeter diameter, and it's ex when well. I, I mean, this is what three inches long, and I can almost tighten a knot. 
Um, it's uh, it's really flexible. It's actually it's actually sort of. Um, I would prefer it to be uh, to them to be slightly smaller, to be honest, for this particular weave, or slightly thicker diameter wire. It's it's a little bit too flexible uh, for when you're weaving. It's great when you know as something to wear, but this this stuff is so tiny it takes absolutely ages. Um, this has taken what now uh, about three and three and a quarter hours to do that much but it's um, it's absolutely I love this little tiny stuff it just takes so long to, to weave and it's 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 a bit awkward because um, you know you can't really see well you I'm wearing glasses no and I'm wearing mag uh, you know uh, sort of close quite close focus glasses and it's um, it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes to see where the rings should go never mind um, actually get them there there's a whole different sort of you know it's, it's like insects can walk on walls because sort of as you you know uh, weight and other factors don't scale well and uh, as you get smaller here uh, sort of the the rings seem to be less easy to control okay clowns guy have a great evening great sleep hope you sleep well um if i try and remember i'll uh, i'll uh, i'll try and remember to drop you a message for exactly where it, where it is but um uh, have a have a great evening. Ah um. oh dear! Come on, rings. They sort of stick to it. Seem to stick to everything, or rather, they stick to everything that you don't want them to stick to, and won't stick to the things that you do. This is where the pointy stick, this, this one here comes in really useful. The only thing you got to remember is not to get frustrated with a pointy stick because it's a sharp pointy stick <laughs> and it's sort of, it's not quite hypodermic sharp pointy stick but it's uh, it's an unpleasantly pointy, st sharp pointy st stick when you um, push it into your finger. Let me open that one a little bit more. <sighs> Alright, try weaving it a different way around then, Zaragon, and we'll see whether it goes in better a different way. So at this point I've completely lost where I was trying to put that, so we'll go. And there. The, the handedness, whether you've opened these rings left or right handed, sometimes it can make a difference if, as to how you try and th thread them through the path as to which side. Sometimes it's easier to go from what sort of one angle and is another. What size rings am I using? These are um, the the rings are normally measured as internal diameter and then ring uh, wire thickness. So these are two point six millimeter, point uh, six four millimeter uh, wire diameter, which is I'm trying to think what that is in in wire ga in American gauge. It's something like about twenty. 224 I can't actually remember I, I tend to remember them in millimeters because although I've got it written in front of me in this particular case because it's 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 easier to do the mass to work out the aspect ratio uh, in millimeters than it is in in uh, in wire gauge 
Right, there we go. Okay. It's uh, a, a tip, especially with the, the little rings, is to make sure you open them far enough as well. It's something that's very easy to not want to do. You sort of just, you don't necessarily feel comfortable opening rings too far. You know, you sort of... Uh, just open them very slightly. Well, you might not be able to see, but it's, it's a. I have a tendency to open them so it's just wide enough to get one, you know, the wire through the one ring, through uh, the gap, and um, it's actually better if you open them more than that. Sort of uh, at least sort of a an eighth of a eighth of a twist, if you like. So if you were thinking of a sort of a, a full 360 degrees, open it so the gap or the, the difference is about an eighth of a turn. Um, it makes it usually makes it easier and it doesn't actually sort of affect the ring that much to open it to that extent, but it does make, uh, generally speaking, it does make putting the rings through the weave a lot easier. Having said which, um, something like a candy cane weave you can't open them too much because if you do open them to that sort of level there just isn't enough space to manipulate the ring the, the other bit of the other the other the other side of the ring where you you oh, what am I trying to say is if you've got a ring like this you try to feed one end of it through through the space you're generally holding the other end um, when they're too far apart the actual space you're trying to get it into um, just won't let you get that manipulated into the into the space. So you end up having to close them almost as much as you can uh, to get them in the space, so you can then feed them through. And uh, it's not so not so bad with uh, with things like this particular weave. But when you get something like a candy cane here, like this. Um, and you're trying to do that there uh, some of them can be quite difficult it's like if you've actually got a if I had to replace one of these rings in the middle here now uh, because I'd, th I'd threaded it wrongly for example um, on a candy cane it's not quite but it's almost impossible to do there just isn't enough space to actually twist the rings apart uh, to get them in or to get them out and then replacing them is even more of a nightmare uh, whereas uh, some of these others which are a simpler weave um, you can do that a bit easier yeah sometimes uh, character dance for a lot a lot of the frustration you end up with um, is you know you, you what you're trying to you're trying to sort of obviously feed the feed the gap uh, feed the ring through the gap and when it's only just wide enough you're sort of pushing on the ring trying to get it through um, to get it through the hole or the gap and then in doing so you're pushing the ring away from you uh, and so you're sort of chasing your tail almost uh, and then as you, uh, usually what happens then is the gap that you because you're pushing the ring away from you the gap that you're trying to feed into or feed it the other the end through closes up and it gets really frustrating whereas if you sort of open the, the rings a bit more um, you can sort of you can feed it through without touching the ring if you know what I mean you know you sort of if you're trying to get it through you can feed it through trying to get through a hole you can feed it through quite easily when it's open enough whereas if you um, if you if you're trying to do it too close you sort of end up pushing this away from you and and trying to get it through and and the gap sort of closes up and it gets really irritating it's also not always necessarily obvious um, 
that that's what's happening and that opening the ring a little bit more makes life life easier but as I was sort of uh, also sort of mentioning um, the these the uh, I, I tend to open rings anti-clockwise so I twist that way uh, when I open them and what that means is Uh, for example, here, if I try and feed this ring through, uh, through, through, what I'm trying to do is get a, get a ring to go through this space. This space here, there's a space. There is a space here. As you can see, I keep catching one of those other rings. There's a there's space there. I'm trying to get it through, and then through another ring on the other side, which, as you can see, is playing awkward. Um, and that's partly what I mean by you put you end up pushing things out of the way but I'm, I'm trying to feed it through through there and if I'm with this ring here to feed it through what I've got to do is I, I almost need this ring that's there's one sat poking up here not to be in the way because it's stopping me actually getting down um, so what I've got to do is rotate the work 180 degrees because I've got a gap in the middle of these here so I can actually put the ring down I've got more space then and that sort of feeds hopefully you can see what I'm what I'm getting at but it, it's there is no other ring in the way when I'm trying to feed that through and it, it goes through a lot easier now So you know, finding the right direction to feed the ring through, I suppose, is the point. Um, somewhat, some directions, like the one I was showing you to start with, is really awkward to do. Doing it the other way, it's, it's I won't say it's really easy, but it's a lot easier. And sometimes what you um, could do with doing, or, or it does help sometimes, is, it, as I say, I normally open rings this way what I call an anti-clockwise twist. Sometimes it's easier to, if you open them the other way uh, with a clockwise twist, then um, something, some, some feed directions which are almost impossible to use with rings turned one way, you can get through really easily if you open them the, the other way. So it's, um, it's sort of worth experimenting sometimes. And so just taking notice of what you're finding awkward to do. You know, like as I say, fight, this is this is awkward for me to do. I've got to sort of really you know, fight it a little bit. Whereas if I just sort of turn it around and I come at it from the the opposite direction, same path, opposite direction, it's really a lot easier. Um, and you, especially when you're learning, you tend to always want to do the same thing, um, and you don't necessarily. Uh, to some extent, you don't actually realise you can go the opposite way. And I know that sounds silly, but you, you kind of learn to do it in one way. You always tend to feed it one way through. And you, you don't realise you can actually come at it from a completely different uh, direction. And a lot of people don't realise you can actually open the ring in the other way. One of the things... Have I got a bigger ring? Yeah, I've got one here. This, is this one's been opened, but it, I don't know if you can see this this ring that it's a slight exaggeration but that's how they come uh, and, and it's it's they're generally wound in fact almost all rings are always wound the same way I don't know why um, but they're generally wound in, in in this spiral and so almost everybody opens them to do to make it that gap wider so that, which is the anti-clockwise twist um, they don't realize you can actually take this ring and open it that way so it's this is titanium it slips very easily open it that way which I've just reversed the direction of that and if I was trying to put that through um, I've now got a, I'm now automatically using the opposite path <laughs> um, just by the fact I've opened the ring the opposite way and so sometimes doing that uh, makes life a lot easier. Uh, 
if you've uh, if you've been having a problem with an ear, then I'd, I, I'd rather than somebody just um, talking into it a great deal on the phone, then <laughs> I uh, I too I too hope it uh, gets better very really quickly for you. Ears are weird things from that perspective. I once had a. Of course, one of the things, um, one of the things about feeding it the right way or the wrong way, uh, one of the things it doesn't do is stop you putting a ring in completely the wrong place anyway. Uh, which is what I've done here. I've doubled up on the ring. So busy explaining it, I did it wrong. Um, yeah, I once had an ear infection that uh, drove me absolutely potty for three days. Not only was it painful, it was it was it itched in really a lot. And okay, I've missed something up here. Let's back that ring out of there. And I'll throw that one away because I've opened it too many times. And let me study what I've got here. Um, I'm missing that ring there. That should be better. So tiny. <laughs> yeah, I love I, I love working with them. I'll show you. I mean, they th these tend to be the size, um, or even that one I showed you a minute ago. These tend to be the size I tend to work with. This sort of size. They're about three eighths, three eighths of an inch. <laughs> I do that a lot. I'll, I swap measurements backwards and forwards. Um, so they're, they're four millimeters, um, which I think is three eighths of an inch off the top of my head. Um, so I'm normally working at that size. So um, just to, I don't know if you can see that on there, but it, this, these tiny ones are half the diameter. <laughs> Actually, that makes me wonder whether I can. There are some weaves where you put one ring inside another and then put uh, something through the pair. I um, wonder how that would work. I don't know. I might play with that later. I'm kind of doing uh, uh, playing with these because I'm playing with them. Um, they are bright aluminium, which is um, has just been tumble polished aluminium, so it's not coated in anything. It's not anodized, so it will oxidize over time. Uh, but I am kind of just playing with these because. Uh, as, as I mentioned, there's, there's well over three hours of work in this and, and by the time it, it gets to bracelet length, which is sort of at the very least is going to be seven, seven and a half inches. That's going to be, um, uh, it's going to be about an hour per inch, which makes them really expensive to do commercially. So it's, it, this is kind of kind of for fun because I don't think anybody would want to pay the cost of um, of actually making one of these. Although having said which, you never know, I guess. It is uh, because it is so tiny. It is kind of unusual. I know a lot of people don't like working with these little tiny rings. What I actually uh, want to try as well with these, assuming I have enough left, because this um, the other thing about this is with them being so tiny, they take so many rings. 
Now I've got, I've, as a total, I've got, and now I've got 500 on the desk in front of me, and I think this will probably take at least 500, if not more, to complete. Uh, one of the things I want to try actually is the flat weave. Uh, European 4 in 1 is a flat weave, and uh, I've done some bracelets in it before. You can make quite a nice uh, sort of wideish sort of cuff, and it, it's quite a nice, quite a nice bracelet. There's there's one that comes up on the picture. There's a couple that come up on the pictures real every so often. Um, but I want to try one of those in in this micro mail in this tiny uh, these tiny rings. He says, remembering that if I do it the other way, it's easy. Remembering my own advice helps. Um, I do because I I think uh, I think this small stuff uh, would be uh, quite a, a very fluid sheet and look uh, and look quite nice. So I want to have a go at doing that as well. Wow, what to the um, the quantity, the time, or <laughs> <Do> you... <laughs> I'm kind of still on one leg here. <laughs> as, as I mentioned, Junior's just down down here, but he's 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 laid just where I want to stand. <laughs> so I'm stood to one side, leaning over slightly. Um, Which is making my right leg rather tired. Um, through there. You wouldn't think it'd be so easy to get confused on a a weave that is a relatively simple weave, and it's kind of like there is only one place. There's only one right place to put rings. But I still keep uh, occasionally messing it up and doubling them up when I shouldn't. <laughs> um, it is a bit like that sometimes. He, for example, he doesn't very often sit on my knee. He will actually come and do what he's done here, which is um, he'll often come and sit by the chair. And literally, he'll just sit by the chair I'm in. He's, he, he's not interested in jumping up and he's not actually interested in sitting on my knee. He just wants to be with you. And. Um, but on the, on the times when he does he does sit on me, he, he, he's sometimes quite funny because another cat comes in and comes near me, and and the others don't often sit on me. But if they um, if another cat comes near, he'll start growling at them. You know, you're not getting on here. And uh, occasionally he even does that if Lady Zara comes in the room. If uh, if she comes near, he, he will growl at her. Just gently, and then, um, and then, he's, but most of the time he doesn't. He's, he's quite. Considering he's, um, he was a feral cat, and uh, at one time he would have, you know, he would have raked you if you put your hand anywhere near him without permission. Then, um, these days he's quite placid. And when I when I say there, you know, you need it to ask permission. I, I'm not joking. You actually did have to ask his permission. Um, I mean, not literally, sort of say, Junior, kind of stroke you or anything. But what you'd have to do is you put your hand just in front of his face, not too close because he'd bite at it, but just in front of his face. And if he want, if he was giving you permission, he'd actually dip his head so that you could stroke his head. Uh, and if he didn't do that. You didn't try. <laughs> yes, he is uh, quite a. Is uh, 
I think one of the things is, is obviously the garden here is a lot bigger. Uh, the the house is uh, has got a lot more space in it for for the four cats, so they can all find their own space in the house. And I think probably his um, with with the you know with having more space in the house and more space in the garden, he's a lot more relaxed. You know, they're, they're, they're less stressed. Uh, and if they want, you know, if they want peace, they can go find somewhere that the other cats aren't going to disturb them. And I think that's probably settled him down a heck of a lot. Especially with a kitten around. And I don't know if anybody familiar with kittens, but they um, they bounce around all over the place. And, and uh, adult cats uh, will get leapt on without any notice whatsoever by the, the kitten just, you know, leaping around and the kitten will either do it accidentally or on purpose to try and get a reaction um, and so sometimes they 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 have when you know the kitten is calming down a bit now but they have in the past sort of uh, all gone and hidden somewhere when the kitten's in that sort of mood I haven't said which actually, Junior and the kitten actually get on quite well with each other most of the time. They will actually play and chase each other around the place. And they are they are um, they are playing because the, the both of them are usually purring while they do it, as opposed to um, being chased because they want to attack each other. <laughs> yeah. Would say to anybody else who's looking at chain mail here as well, and um, there are, you know, if you if you're doing this, you know, we, I have a technique for doing things, and I, you know, I, I just gave some tips if you like then, but everybody tends to develop their own technique for doing things. Uh, ways that they prefer to do things um, you know, the way in which I do things isn't isn't there isn't it isn't the right way of doing it it's a way of doing it um, you know, it's a way of twisting the rings it's a way of feeding them through and to some extent the way in which I'm even doing this weave now it's a way of doing the weave because there is um that needs opening more. There is two ways of doing this particular weave. I'm doing this as a tube and building it up, but you can actually do this weave as a, as a flat sheet first, as long as you want, you know, for the length that you want it, and then you wrap it into a tube and join it. Which actually might be, might be quicker. Um, I haven't tried it. Maybe I will do one of these days. Uh, and it possibly would be easier to do just because it is often easier to do a flat sheet than it is to do a, a tube just because it's easier to hold so potentially don't let anybody tell you if you're doing this you're doing it wrong they might say you're not weaving the weave that you think you're doing that's easy enough to do sometimes and get the get the weave incorrect but um, Providing you, you uh, providing the weave is correct like this, how you do it, develop your own way of doing it. Don't worry about anybody saying you shouldn't do it that way. Generally speaking. Um, I don't know. Well, I don't quite know why. Well, I suppose I do know a little bit, but um, like I say, ring weavers often like um, look for ways to do things faster. And uh, if you're doing it commercially, of course, then then speed 
makes sense. Um, but a lot of you know, I think the way, reason why a lot of people look for speed is because, I mean, this, for example, we've probably only done about an inch and a half, two inches tonight. Uh, it would be really nice to, to have seen this completed in an hour type of thing. Um, so a lot of techniques that people uh, do, uh, show um, and sort of tend to say this is the way to do it are really associated with how to do it as fast as they can. And sometimes those sorts of things whilst, you know, yes, they're as fast as they can, are really difficult to understand. Um, so but if you are looking to do this sort of uh, you know, try out uh, ring weaving, chain mail, chain mail is the art of weaving rings. It's not armor. Armor is made using chain mail techniques. Um, then some of the easier ones to do apart from a straight chain which gets called a two-in-one but that's sort of the chain that you would go and buy from a hardware shop you know one link inside another um that's a that's a relatively easy uh, weave to do to start with um but some of the um uh, some of the sort of next level of complexity which you know, really start to show off woven rings uh, is the Byzantine weave. Uh, Byzantine and box, two very similar weaves. Unfortunately, I don't happen to have one on the desk in front to show you, but that's a ring that's escaped. I'll have to find that later. Um, that's another thing that happens if you don't open them enough. <laughs> they tend to fly out of your pliers. Because you're trying to hold these without squashing them or, or marking them, so you, you're not really holding them as tight as you possibly could. And little Lally, thank you very much for hosting. It's kind of you. Um, yeah, the the Byzantine and the box, two very sim, well, well, the the more or less ver um, variations on the same weave to some extent. They're, they're, those two are, are perhaps the easiest of easier of weaves to start with. So if uh, if anybody is interested in starting uh, ring ring weaving, look into doing those to start with. Um, stay away from things like um, the half Persians to start with at least. Half Persians are a relatively easy weave once you've started. Um, they're a really difficult weave to get started. Not, it's not a case of the difficulties in learning it. It's actually a literally a difficulty in holding the pattern when you you start with three rings, and then you start weaving with from those three rings. Um, most people find it a really frustrating exercise until you've got about ten or twelve rings into a half Persian weave. Uh, dropping it on the desk for a lot of people means starting again just because it is so uh, the, 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 there needs to be a certain number of rings in the pattern before the pattern locks into shape um, and, and the rings are not able to fall out of that pattern um, so a lot of the, the really nice looking way you know the really nice looking waves like the, the candy cane um, the uh, and things like um, the half Persians which actually um, this this one here is a half Persian um, they look really nice but they, they uh, they're not uh, they're not a beginner's wave unless somebody starts it for you and then you carry on then 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 it's uh, it's okay but uh, having said which of course um, I will say things like the Byzantine weave are actually used in jewelry a heck of a lot in, in all sorts of chains chains and bracelets and um, things like that Byzantine 
is is used to f um, quite a lot. Sometimes, sometimes it gets flattened and, and into like a curb chain. Uh, it's, it's still a Byzantine, but it's sort of had the tops shaved off, and they. Uh, So it's a, you know it it is a pattern that's um, that's used a used a heck of a lot. So partly because it looks so nice. Of course, as I've just said, you know everybody develops their own way. So you might be one of these people that find the most um, difficult uh, the the weave that most people find really difficult to do and you could find that you're able to do it first time without problems so uh, you know don't necessarily get put off by uh, by what I say Yes, I'd also potentially say as well, if you want to learn how to do weaves, don't watch me. <laughs> um, potentially actually don't watch anybody. Or rather, don't watch anybody to learn how they're doing it. I mean, it's really hard for me, for example, here to show you exactly where I'm putting the rings. Um, certainly at this size. Um, it's a bit easier on the, on the bigger rings, but it's still quite difficult on a video to show you or show anybody um, exactly where a ring goes. Um, you are much, generally speaking, I will say again, everybody's different, but you, you're often much better at looking at, at either photographs or computer generated images um, of, uh, of rings and where they should go. Because what, for one thing, they're generally done uh, in good close up. Uh, and for another, you don't have to stop a, a, a still picture to try and study what somebody's doing. You can see it. Um, this is a ring I should have opened more, so I'm going to. Thing. Even me <laughs> realise occasionally that hey, I should have opened that ring some more, and now so struggling, um, it goes straight through. The thing about the the, the bigger rings as well is they're easier to pick up. With these being only 0.64 millimeters wire diameter, uh, your um, plier ends are really quite difficult to uh, to pick up wire. That that's that's that thing. The um, it just the 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 rings just sort of slip out of uh, the grasp of the uh, the pliers. I'm actually picking it up because when it lays flat, this the the open end sort of sits up in the air, and I actually have to pick them up using just that top top piece. <laughs> I have found having now done this in. Uh, this is my fourth session on this particular bracelet that um, it's actually my longest one as well and I can't I can't go I couldn't do this this all day 
um, I would have to switch to a different size or even a different bracelet. Um, just because of the constant, not only the concentration, but the, um, the very slight frustration that you get from, you know, just a ring like that happening. You're feeding it through and it pops off the pliers. And actually, um, me talking whilst I'm doing this, one of the reasons, one of the reasons, apart from, you know, obviously you guys are watching, is it keeps me calm. Otherwise I get quite frustrated at that happening. I'd be able to find my, I'd feel my insides sort of winding up. Now where's the next ring gonna go? That's that one, that's that one, so it's across there. Okay. And through there like that. I do like the way this is twisting. I mean, it's twisting just because of the way I'm I'm doing it. It will have if in the tail is the wire tail is holding it in the twist, but I do like the way it twists. <laughs> there aren't very many um, weaves, ring weaves, which actually will hold a twist. You you can twist a lot of a lot of the weaves and, and they're designed to be twisted, but they don't hold themselves in place. Like if I were to lift lift or drop that that way, the twist will tend to just fall out. And a lot of the twisted weaves do the same thing. So whilst they look great while they are twisted, they're quite difficult to keep twisted. You usually end up having to use uh, clasps that um, you know, one untwist, shall we say. Um, so you can't use things like a toggle clasp because a toggle bar will untwist. Magnetic uh, uh, clasps as well will untwist. So you, you're pretty much stuck with things like the lobster claw or the ring, which is sort of a similar sort of thing to a lobster claw, um, which can be difficult to to fasten but also the thing about them is uh, that you've got to uh, you know, before you put a bracelet on like that you've got to sit there and twist it and then hold it twisted while you put it on <laughs> and if you can imagine that's kind of like needing four hands not just three you need four hands uh, as well as the one that you're trying to put it on so um, I think there's yeah, I do there is a there is at least one weave that does self lock so I'm going to have a play with that as well. Hopefully these rings are big enough for that because that's another one that looks good in these little tiny rings. But I am going to stop at this particular point. I have run out of well I've got one ring left but I'm not going to open any more. Um, give my eyes a rest <laughs> and just give my patience a calm down. I'd actually do some work on the on the uh, on the YouTube. So keep an eye out for that, by the way, if you want to see some of the past videos, because I will be uploading over time as many as I can, uh, and a few different subjects. Because as you know, I broadcast all sorts of things, so it won't just be the jewelry. Although there will be quite a bit of that on there, um, and that will be YouTube slash users slash Zaraganard. I think it is. Yeah, so, well, but Zaragan Art's the one you want to look for on uh, on YouTube, just as it is on Twitter, <laughs> uh, here on Twitch, and um, on Etsy as well, Zaragan Art, or zaraganart.etsy.com, as Moobot keeps putting in the chat, and uh, even my own website, zaraganart.com, which also needs some more work done on it. But uh, there's, uh, there's a little bit more information on the website, by the way, about the generally about the pieces that I've uh, done at that point and also a little bit more about the craft themselves like pyrography there's a bit more about there about the tools that get used so it's the sort of things that I actually say when I'm streaming 
um, you can find written down there. But anyway, um, I think that's it for this evening. Uh, thank you very much, Coyote Dancer. I have actually. I, uh, most people would look at that and go, you haven't done very much. Um, you know, given that, well, let's, let me just measure how much have I, roughly how much have I done tonight. So this is three inches long. I've probably done about two inches. So it's about an inch an hour, which is what we were thinking of earlier. So um, seven and a half inch bracelet, seven and a half hours. Or well, seven hours, because your clasp is half an inch. So um, seven hours of work uh, to do a seven and a half inch bracelet, but um, which won't fit me. But it, so uh, this. I may give this way to ladies' hour. I don't know, but I may do. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, seven seven hours to complete in total. The looks of it. I'm going to say thank you for watching, everybody. I'm going to get a warm cup of coffee. I'm going to sit down, probably watch somebody else on uh, on Twitch broadcasting uh, whilst I render some videos and things. Um, Hopefully the next stream will either be Saturday evening or Sunday evening. I should be able to do one one or other evening. It most likely will be some more work on the 3D printer that I'm uh, building. There's some alignment to do on the on the uh, this on the Y axis carriage. Girl, that's a word to say. Um, and the Y axis plate, uh, so the Y drive it's called. So that that's the next stage to be done on there before we move on to the next bit of it, which is the X direction. Um, that's slowly taking shape. So that's that will probably be the next stream. Whether the stream after that I do more of the 3D printer, come back to this or try something else, I'm not quite sure. We'll just have to see how it goes. I usually will tweet at some point. At the very least, just before I go live, saying what's there. So if you are following me on Twitter, at least you'll get that notification, even if you don't get the one from Twitch. It's now, actually it's now 25 to 10 in the UK at night. So that's quite a long time. So I'm going to say good night. Hope to see you again. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.